Hey, thank you. So hi, I'm Jianxin uh, from Intel. Uh, what I'm going to present today is our work on using DMA buff as a mechanism uh, to support the GPU memory in RDMA operations. Next slide. Yeah, I'm going to start with an overview of the RDMA operation itself, and especially when combined with the GPU memory. Next slide. Okay, in a nutshell, RDMA is a DMA uh, plus network. For example, if we have a RDMA write operation, is basically in the initiator side, there's a DMA read. The NIC is going to uh, read the data from the buffer and then send the target over the network. And at the target side, there's our DMA write. For, uh, for our DMA read operation, uh, just the same, but with the direction reversed, the initi initiator will do a DMA write and the target will do DMA read. On the picture on the right hand side, uh, we can see that the data grant, we can see the flow chart of this operation. So the NIC is doing the DMA uh, from the system memory to the, to the NIC's uh, packet buffer. So in order to do this operation, uh, the NIC need to get this uh, DMA address uh, for the buffer. So this is usually done uh, in advance with a process called memory registration. So the NIC driver uh, will provide all the information needed uh, to and do the address translation to get it provided the DMA address as a list to the NIC. The NIC will save those things internally into something like a, a memory translation table. So in order to uh, set up uh, the DMA operation, so the memory pages need to be pinned. So the, when the operation, when the DMA is, uh, is in progress, the memory doesn't, uh, the physical memory doesn't go to, I mean, uh, being accessed to use a different purpose. So the, for the DMA operation, it needs to use the bus address, not using the virtual address. This is usually done at time of memory registration. Uh, for example, for the user space buffer uh, that located in the system memory, the memory pinning is usually done by the function called get user pages. And also uh, to get the DMA address, the kernel function DMA map SG and uh, a family, there's uh, many similar functions. Those are used to translate the virtual address not virtual, translated the page structure into the bus address. Next slide. So in order to use the GPU memory in the DMA, in the RDMA operation, so something needs to be done a little bit differently. So one reason is that because the GPU memory is local, uh, the NIC driver cannot directly pin the GPU memory and it doesn't know the DMA address of the GPU memory. So you cannot directly change the codes, uh, get the user page or the map SG map, map S, DMA map SG kind of function to do the translation. Instead, the DMA driver, the, the NIC driver and the GPU driver has to be uh, work closely uh, to do some information exchange. Uh, the, right, the picture at the right hand side uh, shows uh, the concept of how this is done. Um, so basically the GPU driver has control over the GPU and the GPU memory. So it has to provide some mechanism to get the information of the GPU memory uh, to the NIC driver. So we there's a handshake there, uh, so the information is changed. The NIC driver 
at the memory registration time, we need to get the information from the GPU driver. It will finally uh, deliver the DMA address to the NIC, and the NIC can use those information to do a DMA transaction with the GPU memory. So this DMA transaction uh, is because the, both the NIC and the GPU, uh, they are the they they are they are peers as the peer on the on the PCIe network. So this is a peer to peer DMA is different from when you are using the system memory. Uh, one example uh, of supporting this uh, kind of operation is the peer to is the peer direct from Mellanox. The peer direct peer direct basically provide a plugin interface for the kernel RDMA driver. Uh, each GPU driver will provide a plugin module that will uh, implement a certain set of API functions that will uh, be called by the RDMA core. Uh, the, when the RDMA core is doing the memory registration, it will uh, invoke the plugin functions one by one to ask if this uh, memory is owned by that specific uh, GPU. And the GPU plugin will, when it detects the memory is owned by itself, it will respond and uh, uh, later, <coughs> And associate itself uh, with that uh, with that memory, and the the RDMA core will then uh, using using the CPU specific function uh, to pin the memory and to do the to do the address translation. So this has been worked fine uh, for several so many years, um, but the only issue is this is not uh, in the upstream; it's only available in the Mellanox version of the OFED. So what we want to do uh, is to, to see if we can have an upstream solution uh, to achieve similar result, uh, but not. Uh, <clears throat> so our purpose, our proposal is to use the DMA buff as the mechanism uh, to do the information exchange. Next slide. So here I will give a brief introduction of what is the DM above and how it works. Next slide. DM above is a standard mechanism in the Linux kernel. The purpose is for sharing buffer between different device drivers. In the concept of a DM above, uh, the buffer the buffer is located by one driver, and that is uh, that one is called the exporter. The exporter will uh, export the drive, export the uh, buffer as an object called the DMA buffer object. Uh, <clears throat> at the time of exporting, uh, it, it has to define a set of operations. That set of operations will uh, done uh, all the necessary uh, things to pin the buffer or to do the address translation. After the after this exporting, it can also associate the buffer uh, with a file descriptor. That the file descriptor then uh, can be delivered to the user space, and then uh, send back. To the other side, the, to, to another driver that is want to use the buffer. So that part is called the importer. The importer will translate the file descriptor into the DMA buff object again, and then it can attach itself to the DMA buff and do uh, and call the mapping uh, method to do the address translation. <clears throat> so after the mapping, the importer has the information about the physical address, 
or the DMA address over the buffer, and then it can use that address to do the peer-to-peer -peer DMA transaction with the memory located in the other side. Next slide. Uh, here is the overview of the API uh, of the DMA buff at the exporter side. So basically there are two functions. One is DMA buff export. The other is DMA buff FD. DMA buff export uh, is the main function to export the buff as a DMA buff object. By calling this, it has to define a set of operations. Uh, many of them are optional, but uh, several are mandatory. Uh, mainly, there's one called the map DMA buff. That one is doing the address translation. Uh, it's similar to what uh, DMA map SG does. And it also, at the same time, it should also pin the buffer. And there's a corresponding on map function. And there's another function re to release uh, the DMA buff. And those functions are called by the import side the DMA buff API uh, to to achieve uh, various functionality. Uh, the <clears throat> and the DMA buff FD function is going is used to uh, associate the DMA buff object with a file descriptor. Next slides. So the other important side, uh, there's also a set of functions. The most importantly, uh, there is a DMA buff get to retrieve the DMA buff object from the from the file descriptor. And there is a DMA buff attach that is to associate the device the import at the importer side uh, to the DMA buff. So the DMA buff uh, because the attachment function is actually calling uh, the calling the master exported by the exporter. So that the export at this time has an opportunity to checking uh, the back, checking if the storage back in the DMA buff is actually accessible to this device. And uh, to, so it can re return success or uh, non or failure, depending on the situation. And also there's a optional to, to be attached dynamically, so that is for a different uh, scenario. And the other important function is the DMA buff map attachment. This is the function uh, to do uh, the address translation. At this time, the exporter will determine if the where the buffer is located, and they need to pin the pages and get a DMA address list. Next slide, please. Now we'll uh, uh, show our implementation uh, our, of how to use the DMA buff to support the GPU memory RDMA. Next slide, please. So the implementation is mostly focusing on the memory registration side because that's where uh, the GPU memory is different from the system memory. Um, here is the flow chart of the entire uh, path to do the memory registration. So it started with the memory allocation. The memory allocation is done by the GPU driver. When the mem GPU driver do the memory allocation, it will uh, call the DMA buff export function to export this as a DMA buff object. From the user space, this is achieved through uh, the DRM interface. The user space library uh, calling into the GPU driver to do the memory allocation, in return, it will get the address, size, plus the file descriptor. An application 
uh, will at the right hand side the application will go into the various uh, user space library uh, to do the memory registration along the path the file descriptor will need to be passed down uh, together with other pro uh, parameters and all those promises finally go into the kernel uh, into the kernel rdma driver the kernel rdma driver will then import the dma buff object and call the dma buff uh, api functions to set up the dma address for the gpu memory the nick when doing the RDMA operations, we'll then use those information to perform peer-to-peer -peer DMA transaction over the PCI Express bus. Next slide, please. So to do this, we have to make changes at uh, several uh, layers of software stack. From the GPU software side, the DMA buff is already supported by many existing GPU drivers. Uh, mostly they are as a part of the DRM, uh, GERM, and Prime interface. They are accessed by the IO control method through a specific a special device. Uh, but currently the GPU drivers, uh, together with the DMA buff, implementations, they may not be optimized for peer-to-peer -peer access yet. So there are some improvement ongoing uh, to on that side. <clears throat> for the uh, user space library, it has to be provide an interface to get a DMA buff file dis descriptor. So it, it should be have a as a property of the memory being allocated. For example, it can be as the IPC handle. Uh, so applications is going to use that uh, user space library to do the memory allocation. So this is not a general analog and the user space library also don't want to call the IO control directly. Next slide, please. From the importer side, uh, the RDMA driver uh, need to support the DMA buff as a memory, as a user memory, uh, using a specialized uh, IBU memory get functions. So basically, in the memory registration path, IBU memory get is called to uh, to pin the pages and get the uh, <clears throat> get a list of a DMA address. Uh, for the DMA buff, we need to use a specialized version. That version has additional parameter the, to pass in the DMA buff file descriptor down uh, to to get the thing, get all the information needed. The user space verbs. We need to define two new commands uh, to register to register the memory that is associated with, with a file descriptor. So one command for the regular registration, the other for the re-registration. Re also, these two commands has the two additional parameters to pass the file descriptor down. Next slide. So in order to actually do the memory registration, the, the device interface has also to be changed to add a two method so the memory registration can be done uh, with the actual parameter. The vendor drivers uh, need to implement this two uh, method for the device driver. So this is optional, uh, only if the vendor driver want to support the DMA buff, and it can choose only to support the one, not the two. Uh, only support the regular registration, not the re-registration. And you just need to set the uh, command mask accordingly. The next slide, please. 
uh, in addition to the RDMA driver in the kernel, the user space RDMA library also need to be changed to accommodate this uh, new feature. Similarly, uh, new functions is in, introduced with actual parameter to pass the file de descriptor down. Next slide, please. Uh, the user space also need to add the uverbs commands function so it, the information can be passed down to the kernel. And uh, the user space also has a similar uh, vendor specific device structure. So in this, we need to add these new functions. So the vendor specific operations can support this new file distributed based memory region. Next slide, please. So another layer of the user space stack is the OFI. Uh, so in order to support the uh, file descriptor descript based memory region, the OFI uh, need to use the FI MR reach attribute the function to register the memory because this uh, memory registration attribute has actual uh, fields for for the heterogeneous memory including the GPU memory. In this in here we have this interface uh, parameter that is used to to distinguish between different type of memory allocation. Uh, this could include other GPU uh, APIs, but for here, DM above is going to be a separate uh, interface. And for this separate interface, we have actual parameter uh, file de descript here uh, to through the device <coughs> field. And the provider need to support this to recognize this field and uh, need to handle the registration properly. So if the provider have this support, it, it is indicated this by a special capability bit as FIHMAN. Next slide, please. So right now we have already implemented a software prototype uh, to support this, all the things discussed previously. So this is based on upstream Linux kernel 5.6 and the most recent user space RDMA core library. And we use Intel GPUs that use the i915 driver. Uh, we use the Manox Connect64 uh, EDR NIC as the RDMA NIC using the upstream driver. So we uh, add all, all the necessary things uh, about the DMA buff to the to the RDMA driver. And this has been tested working fine and we achieved the expected performance. The next step is to getting the code changes uh, to upstream. So we have sent the first set of patches to the Linux RDMA list and it got reviewed and got many feedbacks. So we are working on uh, revised patches and we are also watching on the GPU driver uh, de development and the DMA buffer infrastructure development. So uh, we so we can uh, have all the pieces needed in the upstream. And also we want to get this upstream uh, of the user space library on in the RDMA core and the off air changes. Uh, I think that's all I have today. So I'm open for questions now. Any questions? Okay, um, so I know how to find Jian Shin if in case, uh, hold on, there is a question coming in. 
Uh, um, the question is, is this being proposed in Linux? Yeah, this is for Linux. Okay, Tom, um, I, if you want, I can open the mic. Hold on just a second. All right, there you go. Give it a try. Okay, yeah, I guess that answers the question. Um, um, th thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I yes. can hear you, Tom. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, I, my question was more, has it been submitted as a proposal in Linux? Not that it is directed toward Linux, that's obvious. Oh, okay, yeah, so, you know, the, the Linux, uh, if we have submitted to the Linux uh, RDMA uh, list, uh, because Linux has many subsystems, so this is part of the RD, Linux RDMA subsystem. So we submitted the RFC patches. So it's not a formal submission yet. So we just it's for re, uh, request for commands. So yeah, so it's not uh, not a, not official yet. Okay, because I'm aware of uh, you know similar efforts going on and. In other directions that don't necessarily depend on the DMA buff, or maybe I'm mistaken. Yeah, there are many uh, similar things. I mean, there are even there was even a effect uh, related to DMA buff before, uh, but it's different. Yeah, I I, I saw it. Also, also okay. So it's an alternative proposal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, all right. So we have 15 minutes of break time. Uh, thank you, Jiajin. Let's uh, meet again at 10 a.m. Thank you.